Jackson from behind. Oh, clever play. Jackson maybe should have handballed that one. Now let's have a kick at the goals. He's put it through. A great goal by Mark Jackson. And up go the arms and a little dance. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he is, you've got to admit it, he is very entertaining. Jackson and Pickett. Jacko has been doing it with one hand. Can he do it this time? Go, Jacko! <laughs> <laughs> what a great game he's played. Oh! Jekko. Jekko's looking for 15. <laughs> he's not going to get it. <laughs> 15. He's got it. Got it. Oh! And there's the new track. <laughs> That's the one we've been promising you for weeks. Jacko has done it. Put this. He's away to Kelvin Moore. Tell him all about it, Mark. <laughs> That's it, Jacko. Pass on the message. <laughs> what a character. <laughs> what a character. You're a one man band down there. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, dear. He is a one man show down there. He's as happy as Larry. Kicked his first goal, and he is told about 15,000 people. In no uncertain manner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 dear. Jacko's performing down there again. <laughs> there he goes. I reckon Perry Brothers Circus need a new clown. Maybe he can get the job. We played. No, it won't. Bit of acting, the umpire said. Kicked off the ground by Walsh. Runs goes in. And a chance there for Waddell. He went down under the weight of the Essendon Guernsey. And now the umpire said a free kick will go the way of Merv Neagle. Oh, a headbutt. has gone off that silly play, Neagle. That's that is not... stupid. Stupid football. That should have been a report, and I think it will be a report. The umpire's thinking about it. Yep. So Geelong set to hit the front, which they do. It's a goal to Jacko. First blood of the catch, and that came up inside the minute mark. <laughs> Jacko now going mad, and of course, the next thing he'll do is go back to young Morris and try and put him off his game with some sort of a fairy walk or an ape trance or whatever he goes into. Now, watch him go down here to uh, young Morris. There he goes now. He's told Morris, that's one for you, son. And Morris overruns the ball. as a chance for Jacko again. Weaves his way through the pack. That's a goal. There's a chance for his second. It's bounced in the right way. Oh, 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 just watch him go mad there. Look at him. Look. Look at Jacko putting on his best performance for them. The Jacko Show, 1985. Well, young Morris a bit stiff that time, but he misread the bounce of the ball. Ah, uh, Jacko was too good, Luke. This will be the easiest goal he'll kick. No, Jacko's on his own. With a bit of plaster. Come on, come and get it, guys. <laughs> the Jacko show. Salmon onto the ball. Sandy has Jackson now. Runs around his man. Plays on. The nice-looking kick from Jackson. It's a goal! And Geelong are in front. Not anything's worth a try at this stage of the game. Oh dear, now I know why you went into movies, Jacko. It stands out a mile, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But, um, you does know, it bring I, back memories? Yeah, it does. You know, I really enjoyed my football time uh, until the very last, um, well, it was a blow up at um, Princess Park against Hawthorne, which really put, put, a, put an end to my game. Um, I think before that, I think that I gave good value to the people that came and watched. And I think that a lot of footballers overlooked that. Uh, when they take the field and I think the uh, AFL uh, at the time you know um, was short of characters in the game so they gave me a little bit of a run but um, I offered my services after that year uh, when that big blow up came and I got, eventually left um, Geelong um, to uh, the Sydney Swans for actually I was going to go up there and play for nothing and Fitzroy and directives as I understand it came down that um, wouldn't allow me to go to either of those clubs. Now I don't know where that came from but of course that was back in the good old days when it was the VFL. So um, that was one of the points why I, why I left the game but after that incident um, I faced a tribunal and um, I got reported eight times in that particular game which I wasn't proud of but yeah. you know I was prepared to cop a week for each one yeah. and uh, I had to go to, I was working for Willisey at the time and they were having a party and there was an old sports reporter there and after the tribunal, the very day after, my dad died of a heart attack. And uh, the sports reporter actually came up to me and he said that, you know, your dad was a good bloke, but uh, you brought that heart attack on. And uh, people haven't seen me at the footy since that day. Wow.
No. So it was very disappointing. Yeah. Can I ask you one thing seriously? Uh, and you said, hey, you know, and you did. You brought personality back into the game, Jacko. Mm -hmm. Was it contrived? Did you go out? Did you have a? To me, there always seemed to be that there was a Jacko plan. Yep. You know, because you, you're not a, a blocker. You know, you no. can make money. Was that was that the aim? Well, you know, so many times through junior football, you hear, you know, you just treated like a, a piece of meat, and uh, you pushed and shoved, and you virtually guided right in, right through your junior football, which is no more, thanks to the current administration of the AFL, no more under 19s. And I think that is the breeding ground. And so many guys are proud to pull on an under 19 jumper and go back and play for the rest of their career, but. Yeah, I, was, I had a uh, plan which I executed and the first thing I wanted to do and uh, after the first game I played, uh, I was a little bit disappointed because I'd put so many years playing Saturday and Sunday through my junior year, starting at the age of 12 and finally making it at 21. I ran out into the ground and I thought, gee, is this all there is to it? I was a very aggressive junior footballer and uh, if I would have followed that tack, I would have been pushed out of the game um, very soon, like uh, guys like Robert Muir and yeah. Phil Carmen. And uh, so I sort of, I thought I'd try comedy and uh, that's what I did. But I mean, even though you try comedic um, things on the ground, you've got to be able to get the ball in the first place and you can't do it when the ball's in your half of the field because you've got to concentrate on what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's how I went about it. I had a plan. The first thing was to get Australia thinking that I was an idiot. I successfully did that. And uh, since then, I've just been underwriting uh, it ever since by uh, going out and doing sports nights and sports talks and seminars and talking about football and sport and how you go about exploiting uh, the chances that you get. And unless you do that, um, I'm afraid you're going to be very disappointing at, uh, disappointed at the end of it. Can I say, ask in closing, do you want to continue to be an idiot? Or do you want to now, I mean, obviously with this gold mining yeah. business and the acting career, mm. are, we, are we going to see a, different, a serious Mark Jackson, the well, businessman? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, that was a certain section of my life that uh, I had great fun doing and, uh, and, and executing. And now I'm in the business, uh, the business arena and hopefully uh, all those things can sort of help. And uh, you've just got to draw up another plan, and people will just have to wait and see. Oi. Jacko. Oh, <laughs> yes, thank you very much. We will Poor look out. Sandy. We will look out for <laughs> signal one. And look out, look out for the big float from Dolcon Gold. Yes, so, and right. I'll make you some money, and I'll make all the sporting public some money. You could sell snow to the Eskimos, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Great to catch up with you, Mark Jackson. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much. Good on you, Jacko. Oi. We shall. <laughs> yeah. We shall take a break, and then be back with one of the classic home and away games. Oh, oh. Oh, I tipped